and we have returned. Uh, yes. Velgard's boots. Uh, Velgard boots. The front door opens. Harder than that. English. <laughs> Work with me here, English. God. <clears throat> Velgard boots. The front door opens so hard it won't be posted and not repaired. As you enter the hall, Eric is already at the head of the table with his axe drawn. Eyes wide. Wide eyed. Look at his skull pits. Scramble to find their own weapons. Turning blades and meat stones in the process. And combat. I. Wait, can't we, like. Yeah, we can choose where they start. Okay, that's right. Oh! Like, within this area, we can choose where they start. Uh. damage to strength and armor for one round. That's fine. Alright. Your Okay, you moved up. Attack him. Right. I guess I'll just move over and deal with this guy right away. Rally. Guess now I know it's, it's been a while since you were in high school and all, but do you remember Skullrick's Law? Skullrick's Law? Yeah, like, the, like, Gary L. Skullrick's Law of High School Remedial Hotness. Not at all. Well, it, it, it's, it's like the theory that, that, like, no, the average girl will gravitate toward, towards a slightly uglier girl, so that to the common, to the common, like, high school male, they will appear hotter. Okay, that's a weird one. Yeah, but I mean, I've heard of that idea, but I've never heard of it like called that. That's because I just made it up. Literally. Literally. Why are you making things up, sir? Because I kind of had a experience like that at my job recently. They were like, I was going to maybe say like early college students or like late high school, and they were like. Two or three average looking ones and one one that wasn't so average looking and I'm like, oh yeah, they're only going towards her so they can look better. And I just remember like Okay, I went to Eastern Pennsylvania High School, so lots of good looking girls, like n no really bad ones except one and she was oh my god like so ugly well I, I don't want to use like ugly but she was not attractive at all like kind of slightly round kind of like stringy hair kind of like, jumpy face. I'm not, like, saying... I'm trying not to say these in an insulting way, but... Yeah! She... Yeah, and I just remember, like, a lot of... her friends looked better by association yeah. when they were around her. God, stop running away! I just want to murder you, is that so much to ask? Do you have, like, range attacks Not in these here? characters. Mm. They're all melee. Can you choose a different kind of melee attack? Uh, not really. Hmm. Then it's not full-on the type of strategy RPG I'm thinking of. Not yet, anyway. I know we can get archers later. No, no, I meant, like, do you want a shield bash 
or a sword slice. That may or may not come with level ups, I'm not sure. Oh. Like, there are abilities, like, this guy's got a whirlwind attack, where he just mm. hits everything around him. Like so. Ooh! Ooh! Tempered by blood and pain. Oh, okay, can't read that. It was very fast. Mm. You're up. <clears throat> there they are. Gods be damned. I've got to wash off this blood. How can you damn the gods? They're already dead. Eric is looking out of the hall's windows into the bay. The fleet of long ships approach with sails of bold reds and blues. Oh. One banner I know well, Volgnir. I hear fireworks outside my window, and I don't know why. Apparently, hmm. people want to celebrate Father's Day early, I think. Maybe. <clears throat> Next, our Varl skin ship, Master Spell. The other flag looks important. Yeah, important guess. See what I deal with. All day long. <sighs> I can see that you have a hard time dealing with all this, but uh, things make a little more sense. You hope that I might have a stake in saying everything's fine here when the royal guests arrive. Not me, the governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now I have to make sure there's no rotting bodies or pools of entrails still in the Great Hall before they come by. You know, he doesn't like that. But can I ask you one more favor? Could, could you just scratch my back? It really, really itches. Aye, Eric, what is it? If, if you happen to stall a guest down by the docks, I wouldn't object. Maybe I win. Eric and Valgard hustle from the mead house. To his credit, Eric tosses the barkeep a spar of silver for the mess. You give an apologetic shrug and go to greet the new arrivals down at the docks. Oh boy, new people to meet. I'm excited. <clears throat> Old Nier. A familiar barrel steps onto the docks. Mind you recall a much younger version trapping them all in the world time but it's not purpose. Now you want this one? Gods, Ubin, you're looking ancient. Comes with being old. If there is a Volgnir, there must be a Hakon. Uh hmm, how do I wanna Alright, let's go with uh most better be. Still bleeding tributes from the poor and stupid old yox? At what age do you lose a sense of shame? Uh, your dear Jomanzi. And I feel like more Scottish than I want to Fuck it. Your dear Jomanzi. I'll have. Uh, I'll take over lingering death. In, I'll take that over the lingering death in Grotheim. Speaking of. I've had no sense, had no sense that you were so far from home. I've just returned from Aberang, in fact. It's right next to Bangbang. Uh, and Glad Fori. Hakon mentions the other ships in the bay, sails all still fluttering. Uh, no, Hakon motions to the other ships in the bay, sails still fluttering. 
Golden Wolf Head, blazoned on red, the king of men, or someone on his path. The king's wealth. The king's son, Luden. Don't you know? Scrivener? Scrivener. Scrivener? I don't even know what that word means. I think That's why I can't even pronounce it. I think it's Scrivener? Mm. Yeah. Anyway. Yep. A anyway, we vi we visit his capital. He visits ours. It's how you make alliances these days. It's called friends. It's a miserable waste of time. Yes. Hagon has it. It's almost forgotten. It's a good thing you're around, Hagon. Well then. You're going to Grothheim. I have the distinct feeling of the, I've finished my business in Strand. I'm setting there myself. We should caravan. We should. Give it a day. In better circumstances, I drink the week away. But ah, oh, let's just let's just be done. Find me tomorrow at the gate. What he's trying to say is the prince is a delight to behold. It's you. Oh. Where, where is Morgor? Hakon, I haven't found a place to put up the warriors. I'm heading up to meet the governor. A host of giants to part in his way. You recognize you. Now there's a stranger to you. Yes, I'm off to find Morgor. See you in the morning, Scrivener. I'll be going. I'll be along. The young prince of his men ambles from the ship. He brushes off his tunic, scanning the beach with low eyelids. Ludin. Uh, Ludin looks for all the world, the sort of boy who grew up pulling the leg of uh, pulling the legs from spiders. The long road back to Grothheim should be more interesting than most years you do. Weariness suddenly settles in, you chuckle to yourself about what an odd day it has been. One of the governor's men at the Great Hall can find you a place to sleep. On the other hand, if you're going to join the Grovenir's caravan tomorrow, it might not hurt to share a drink with Hakon, or introduce yourself to the they spoke of so highly. So which one do we do? Hmm. Oh, whoops. I didn't realize clicking them was going to okay. be Okay, there you go. Choice. That one. We're seeing the King of Men. Okay. Is this the right place? You find the prince at the end? God's blind in the buildings. The sharp eyes borrow. You must be where the food is. The woman in red eventually waves you over and stands nearby, arms crossed. Three things, prince. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna take this one. Um, Jordan. Yes! Your fault here? I, I, I don't remember you. Not exactly. Near a long time. I'll be joining you back to Grothheim with my guards. Ludin looks up at you for the first time. The woman just reacts. Well, why? I work for the king, carrying ties to the capital. The cross by chance. Oh, the tax collector. Mm, fine company. What do you want? I have a happy breathing history. Varl historian? <laughs> Don't you already know? Your king and mine both been practically trumpeting it throughout the cities. I've been on the road a while, I'm afraid. Ludin takes a deep sigh. Whether tired or ungracious, you are uncertain. Maybe both. The fog malady, mostly. Fognir came to our capital in Navarang, and now we go to the Varl's capital in Grothheim to cement this grand alliance for the next age of men in Varl. I don't know why. The sun's still in the sky and not moving. It seems kind of pointless to me, really. I think it's something like a house exchange. You sound unconvinced. No, that wasn't right. <clears throat> you sound unconvinced. Unconvinced. Uh, I can't say that word right, that's weird. 
unconvinced. I can't say it right with the accent, though. Ah, uh, like uh. I'm dropping into a different one. There, there's no need for it. It's damn cold up here, anyway. You get the sense he's struggling not to complain outright. You take the opportunity to excuse yourself. Oh, okay, so we still get it. It's just four. Ah. Uh. Scrivener. No, that's not what I wanted. Okay. If you find Hagdon in the meat house, surrounded by other Varl, Strad is no stranger to Varl, but rarely seen this many, Hagdon waves you over. Went straight for the flag of. Uh, Volknir's, Vol Volknir's one who agreed to pass up the drink. I wasn't invited to the governor's hall anyway. You already missed the ma you already missed the massacre. Every year I make the rounds collecting taxes. Every year it's human settlements that give me trouble. Now that, that, that one is a little bit off weird. Uh no surprise. What this time? When I got here they were full of when I got here the great hall uh, When I got here the great hall was already full of bodies. We added a few more. Ha! Humans. I guess there is only one. Uh, I guess I only lived as long as the ox fart. If only. If, I guess if I only lived as long as the ox fart, I might be desperate to make something of myself too. You're not going to start trying, are you, Hakon? Hakon lets the little chuckle. If the Varl could recount his deeds, any Varl could recount his deeds. Known as he, uh, known as he is for cutting a swath through dredge at Volgnir's side. Second war, and regularly since then. Down here, I'm a glorified. Da God, I, it, oh, this is so hard to differentiate between the two of them going back and forth. Uh, I'm gonna have to drop into a different voice for this because it's just gonna be a problem if I don't. <laughs> for whatever reason, they're so similar. I keep having the trouble bouncing back and forth. Ugh. Alright, uh, how do I want to do this? <clears throat> Down here I'm a glorified bodyguard. You might have a point. Just another reason to get back to Grothheim. Soon enough, I'd imagine. You drink until the meat house becomes overbearing. Then, sit back into the cool air outside. Uh, I guess the Great Hall is the only place to go to. Yeah. And don't worry, man, I have a trouble reading aloud, too. It's like I can read to myself, but when I need to read aloud, I'm just, like, stumbling. I, I have that problem. The, the other problem is, like, literally those two accents are so similar for whatever reason in my head that I can't pull them apart right now and separate them into two distinct voices. <laughs> like, doing them one immediately after the other is a problem. And now I'm remembering, um, kind of less than attractive girls, like more, <laughs> like most attractive friend who I had like one percent the hearts for, but now maybe in hindsight I should have gotten to know her a little bit better. Yeah, but it's like maybe she had feelings for me, but. Maybe not? Eh, who knows, it's hard to tell. Yeah, yeah. You never be sure unless you ask directly, and even then, it's like, oh god, what do I say? Do I tell him the truth, or do I just try to hide it? Which one will make me more attractive? Yeah, and I remember confessing my feelings to this girl, and her response was, well, Brandon, I... Brandon, well, I... Brandon, I, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, Brandon, and then she just, then she just looks at me, walks away. I, I'm sorry, I'm just imagining, like, in her head, a blue screen of death. <laughs> just broken, like, uh, 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 uh. Yeah, but, like, she was, like, one of my best female friends. Like, granted, I only knew her for, like, four years, like, three years really well. Yeah. And, and I knew, like, remedial hotness girl for, like, eight 
nine maybe so yeah yeah so like my high school crush kind of devastated me for like about two years yeah Wait, wait, wait. So the sun doesn't move. Does that mean the earth stop? That's a very good question. Maybe? It could also be that, like... It could also be that for whatever reason, the rotation has shifted to a geocentric rather than a heliocentric. Like, hmm. the sun's now rotating and is locked in the same position around the sun. So, the like... Sun, sorry, the sun is locked in the same position around the earth. So, like, South America, assuming this takes place in, like, Norse country, so, like, South America is now permanently night? Yes. Although, this could also be relating to new, uh, Norse mythology, where it's, like, I think it was, like, a bunch, like a couple of giant wolves are chasing, like, the sun and the moon. And when the sun and the moon stop is when Ragnarok happens. And Ragnarok is the apocalypse? Essentially. It's when the death of all gods happens. They've mentioned the gods are dead. Oh. So we could be in the middle of Ragnarok right now. Huh. I mean, th there's also a couple of other things that reference Ragnarok and what starts that reference. One of them is just straight up like, if Baldur, god of light, dies for whatever reason, that's immediately Ragnarok starts. Huh. It it's one of the reasons why, and this is kind of spoilers for God of War. And kind of not, because if you know basic um, Norse mythology, you'll know this. But th there's a reason why uh, Baldur was blessed with literally immunity to everything except one thing. Um, his, uh... Beans. It gives him so bad constipation. Not, not, not quite. Um, what was it? It was, uh, I think it was his Ironic, brother, I know. I think, that did this, but, like... She basically made all of the things in the world promise not to hurt him. And uh, one of the things, the only thing that decided not to uh, comply was Mistletoe. So, Mistletoe is the only thing that can hurt Baldur. And in the mythology, Baldur gets shot by an arrow with Mistletoe in it. <sighs> oh, and I was going to guess a, a sword wrapped in Mistletoe. Nope, an arrow. Huh. And as such, Baldur dies, Ragnarok starts. Huh. But, uh, after we've had this little mythology chat, uh, we'll catch you people in the next episode. Yes. Bye-bye.